Hello, welcome back, my favorite coder cats and coder kittens. As usual, this is Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow most places online, and I am here again to talk with you about Linden scripting language. We have a special request coming in from the Discord for a one of those, those uh, memory match game type things. So we're going to go over how to put that together using your own pictures and a series of basic prims, since I'm really not that much of a mesh worker myself yet really need to work on that. But if you start with the Mark 1 cube, there's actually a few things I think I can teach with this little project. Exactly how you design this is entirely up to you. This is just how I'm putting it together, giving it a nice background. Then we're going to have additional cubes. Actually be easier to do this. So, because darn lags. Now it processes all those control Z's. Seriously, I hit control Z like 17 times and it did nothing. Then it all caught up with me. I hate lag. So, each of these boxes will deal with one face of, or one part of the, the game. We're gonna make it four across. Link those. And three down. Link those. And then adjust the back part of the board. come to think of it, black is not going to be the best color for that. You'll understand why in just a moment. Just doing some quick adjustments to make this all line up because I'm being a little bit nitpicky today. So there we would have the basics of the board. We're gonna link all of the buttons to the main board. So now that is a single coherent piece. Next, you're gonna need the pictures to put in there. I have a few that I've selected myself, but You can literally use any picture, <clears throat> any texture in there, anything will do for making this work. As you see, I picked six of them because we have a 12 slot board, four by three. Specifically picked 12 to get a decent amount of space with that you can make it larger or smaller. Just try to keep it to an even number since you have to have two of each image. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to set up code that will distribute the images. So, we're going to create a list. List, picks, and then here we are going to establish, actually we'll make it a function up here. fill picks. Since we're going to use a for loop, we're going to use integer i, integer all equals, Inventory texture. I 
always useful in something that's going to be even a little bit complicated. We're also going to add in a debug option. Integer. Debug equals true. If debug owner say string all plus textures found. So we're going to take this carefully piece by piece. We're going to start by just making sure that it's properly detecting the number of images available. Six textures found, as we would expect. Then four. I equals zero. I is less than all i equals i plus one. You can also do that as is commonly done in programming circles with a plus plus. I happen to, or just i plus plus. Personally, I find it much easier to read the script to just have i equals i plus one. So, pix equals pix plus Inventory name Inventory texture I If Debug Just to make the debug code a little bit easier, we're actually going to make that its own separate thing String add equals Add if debug LL say uh, owner say sorry owner say adding texture and quotation marks plus add plus quotation mark space to picks. Have a small error. What is the error? What did I do? I did not put a semicolon there. I told you all in the first lessons, love your semicolons, worship your semicolons. There we are. Blue hearts to pick list, bolt, butterfly, coin, flower, and leaf one to picks list. Very good. Excellent. So we have now populated the picks list with just this little bit of code and this quick reference. Could we have put all of this in the state entry easily but it is super important if you're going to reuse a function to separate it out because then you only have to fix it in one place but even if you're not reusing it even if you're only using it once putting it separate like this means that looking through the actual steps of the program itself for what function is called when becomes a lot easier it becomes a lot more readable so it's still a good thing to do so the next thing we're going to do once we have the fill picks list is we're going to assign those two different parts of the object. Now, because I don't know 100% how you're going to build your version of this, so I'm going to set up, show you how to set it up so it should automatically feed this through and get this going. So we're going to create a new function, and that is populate. Now, the populate function, as we're going to write it, is going to assume that you put this control script in the root prim. And then it will go through and determine how many other parts you have. Now to do that, we have to look at this and see handy dandy Google to tell us just how many parts there are in your object. And that didn't quite get me. Create 
create link, break link, get link name, get link number. I know there is a way to get it, get number of prims. That's what I was looking for. I knew I'd be able to find it this way. Get number of prims. Why did you go back on me? There we go. Pop the script back open. There we go. Integer all equals get number of prims. That will be how many parts are in the overall object. So we will then be able to discount the root. So integer this equals get link number. If debug owner say string all plus number of parts the root is string this did not put a plus sign in there currently will not run this function because it has not been told to, so we're adding populate to the state entry. Number of parts 13, root is 1. So, in order to make absolutely sure that it is going to act string, pick count. Really should just make that tr properly count. Picks to place. So with that done, what we are going to need to have it do is place randomly pick a picture, but keep track of which ones it has actually placed. So, a way to do that, there, there's a couple ways we can actually go about doing that. We could assign the individual pictures, randomize them up a bit. We could randomize the list a bit. Um, but what I would like to do is just randomly pick an individual picture out of the list using frand and using round, and then have it automatically track when it has used a given one of those a set number of times. So, a way to do that, how to make the computer code know that it has used a given item on the list a set number of times. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to make two lists. List used equals clear. List done equals clear. So what we're going to do now is we're going to randomly select. The pick count will give a specific number of things in there, but the list goes, the, the pick count will be as though it starts from one. It'll give us a total of six because there are six images. However, the references in the list are gonna start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. There will be no six. So we're actually gonna drop pick count by one, pick count equals 
pick count minus one. Then we're going to use integer choose equals ll round ll frand pick count. So this will tell it to choose a specific picture from the list randomly for every entry that we get on here. Now, in order to make sure that that entry is available, we are going to then have string equals list to string pick name. No, no, I can't. No, I cannot. Ignore I said that. So the first thing we're going to test is, are we allowed to use this one at all? That is integer, nope, integer last. Because I didn't give those variables names, and that was kind of dumb of me. If nope is does not equal negative one, then we're going to go through and we're going to run this again. So it selects one minute while I figure this out. This is actually slightly more complicated than I thought it would be. Okay, I figured out what I need to fix. You see, the problem is that if I just run it as is, and then the easy way would be if it comes out with nope, would be just to run pick select again. But we're actually going to make pick select return pick name string this pick equals pick select. So when we run this, I need to end the first running of it with a chosen pick. So that means I've got to have a different type of loop that processes these values. So Well, nope equals negative one. So we're actually going to move all of these inside the well loop. Nope equals negative one. Define that as an integer. There we go. That should solve this problem. This loop will run well. Nope is less than negative one. Actually, I need to correct that. Nope. Is greater than or equal to zero. All right, slight adjustment. Figured out what I was doing wrong before I actually ran into the problem. This will keep running as long as that is true, as long as nope is greater than or equal to zero. This means if it comes out negative one at this stage, it's allowed to run. 
that is where I was going wrong. That makes this work. So, here we go. At this point, if nope, if it finds that item in the nope list, it will automatically give a number of zero or higher, which means it will break this. It will no longer be or it will make this true. The number will be greater than or equal to zero, which means it will run it again until it finds one where nope is in fact negative one. This will run until, another way we could do that actually would be does not equal negative one. Even better, there we go. When nope does not equal negative one. So if nope is anything but negative one, this will keep running. Since the return is outside the loop, it cannot run. So we also need to move the pick name. Up here. because if it's contained inside the loop, it will only exist during the loop. These lists exist outside, so they're present for every iteration of this loop. And every time the script resets, they're set back to empty. So, if it is not found in nope, then it is allowed to be used. We've already seen that because this will continue to run until nope is negative one. So that's already taken care of. The next thing to do is if integer last, if last does not equal negative one, nope equals nope plus pick name. What this will do is if the list has already has that picture in it, that it will automatically add it to the nope list, which means that when it cycles through this in a future iteration, that it will, be, it will find it and therefore that will be invalid. Else, last, equals last plus pick name. So this means that when it picks a, a texture, it will add it to either the nope or the last list based on whether it's already in there. So this is how we check, has it been used once? Has it been used twice? Boom, we got that taken care of. And that should automatically run that. So it'll return pick name while doing only one iteration of calling pick select. We then set link texture I pick select all sides. And just so that we will see them, we're going to temporarily adjust this to a pure white. That should do the trick. What is it objecting to? I did not close the parentheses. Return pick name. That is because I did not actually bring down that to here. There's another way to do that though. I can leave that up there where I only have to run it once and I give it an integer 
pick count and then here I feed it the pick count integer. What I just did, what I just did there was this had operated on the pick count, but it didn't have any pick count that it was aware of because this is a local variable restricted to the populate function. But rather than run this check and this math every single time, I simply establish it here. And then I set the pick selector here to send that number, which it now expects as an argument as an integer here and it proceeds to run accordingly. Now, error type mismatch. Since nope is a list. Ah, here's what I did wrong. I, did not properly remember the correct name. Ah, that is because I used nope as a variable there. I see what I did. I forgot the names of my own variables. There we go. Type mismatched, used. I got myself mixed up and was using my integers that track has, does it appear in this list or that list, and was using them in place of the names of the list. That was silly of me. Okay, that is almost perfect. Almost. What I did is I attached it to the wrong slot. There we go. Needed to remember to put in the I plus there. Textures, returning them all to default. There we go. That successfully made sure there's only two of each individual item. We have successfully populated the memory board. We have dynamically made sure that it only turns up with two possible matches for each given item. So, this is already turning into a bit of a long video, so I will turn into gamification for this tomorrow, next time, but I've shown you an int what I think is an interesting way with two relatively contained functions for how to go through and populate your memory board in a dynamic fashion. And we'll just turn that back to turning them all black so we don't know where they are. Um, actually, let me just run it again one more time, this time without the debug feedback, which you'll see is very easy to turn off. Just change that variable to false, hit save. And there you go, entirely different layout. A couple of them the same, but a different layout. Run it again. Again, different layout. So this will get you a dynamically changing layout that follows the rules for a memory board in the fact that you will only have two of each individual picture. So.
Next week, I will go over actually gamifying it and tracking, letting you actually click them to see which one is which and doing scores and doing multiple players and all the rest of that. Uh, but this is already getting kind of long for one week, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. I hope to see you all back for next week's. Until then, as usual, good day, good luck, good week, happy scripting. Meow. Um, do remember to check the links in the descriptions for the playlists to this series, as well as to Coder Kitty Decoded, where I go over the syntax and arguments of various LSL commands for those who happen to like how I present the information. Um, everybody give a bit of a shout out, if you will, on the Discord. Um, out to, uh, yep, to Jay Sparrowtree. I thought that's who it was. Um, it was his idea to do this as a tutorial. So, you know, if you happen to like this, make sure to hop on the Discord. Link will be in the description. Give him your affection. And until then, that is it for this episode of Coder Kitty's Workshop, where every lesson is a project and every project is a lesson. I will hope to see you next week.